Hi, YouTube. This is Angie the Antitheist, and today I'm going to answer a pretty common question I hear, which is, you know, if you hadn't grown up in a cult, if you'd had a more normal, less abusive, you know, religious experience, would you still be an atheist? Um, and I can't, you know, really, you know, do more than guess, because, of course, you know, I did grow up with those experiences, and, you know, who I am today is informed by who I was and what I went through and what my upbringing was like. I mean, that's true for all of us. But to the extent that I can, you know, based on what I know of me now, guess as to, you know, what I would do or imagine how I might respond uh, if I'd had a different, you know, religious childhood, I still think I would have become an atheist. I think the problem of pain, um, the problem of human suffering, and um, I think, you know, it would have persuaded me of the absence of a loving God, uh, regardless of my own childhood. I do think that because I've always been moved by human suffering. When I was uh, three, I remember one of those, uh, you know, ads for uh, sponsoring a child came on the TV and I was so sad that I, I went and took my blanket off my bed and told my grandmother I wanted to give it to the cold kids on TV. Um, you know, I've just... Yeah, I've done volunteer work um, my whole life as a Christian and a non-Christian, working with people who were homeless or people who had disabilities, or you know, I've done uh, free reading tutoring or, or math tutoring since I was like 14, pretty much every year. You know, I, I give a shit. That's basically what it is. I give a shit. I want to make the world a better place. I want, you know, the environment to still be around for my kid and, you know, maybe grandkids, <laughs> you know. I want, you know, every kid to have uh, the basic things that they need, like clean water and education, freedom from violence and abuse and, you know, the ability to read and access to medical care. Just, you know, I give a shit. And God doesn't seem to. Where is he? I mean, why is there crypto? Why won't God heal amputees? Why won't God just, you know, make sure that there's enough drinkable, clean water everywhere in the world? I mean, just think about what that would do. Is there, I mean, you know, if God's all powerful and all loving, if God gives a shit about us and has the ability to do something about that, then this world doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense to have crypto. Doesn't make sense to have childhood cancers. Doesn't make sense to, you know, have so many of the things, you know, cystic fibrosis and, you know, Down syndrome and cerebral palsy and Parkinson's disease and polio, you know, you know, human modern medicine and science have only, you know, been able to really address these problems, you know, in the last few decades. And yet God's supposedly infinite and he couldn't figure out, you know, how to get rid of polio. No, we need a gem salt for that. So I think that the problem of pain, that the absence of God's positive action in the world, I think that, you know, God's invisibleness and, you know, the problem of pain, I still think those would have led me to atheism. If you're a Christian and you start having doubts, there are basically three things you can do. You can read an apologetics, you know, uh, C.S. Lewis or, you know, Josh McDowell or Joel Alstein. And, you know, you can, you know, just say, Phew, okay, somebody rationalized it for me. I can get away with believing this crap for another, you know, year or so. And you just, you know, put it out of your head that way. You think that the answers have been provided because you don't look very, you know, closely at the details. You don't think too hard about the uh, pat explanations that you're given. Second option is that you just repress those thoughts. Try not to have them, which, you know, that's a very Christian thing to do to, you know, intentionally limit your own thinking. The, you know, but if it's, you know, bad thoughts, evil thoughts, sinful thoughts, then of course, you know, you, you should, you know, try not to have them and just, you know, suppress your brain activity. Um, the third option, you know, as a Christian believer who starts to have some doubts about, you know, God's morality or the problem of pain or, you know, the nonsense in the Bible. You know, the third option is that you actually investigate those doubts and you look at the details and you look at the evidence and see where it leads you. And it leads to atheism. 
because the evidence for God just isn't there. The you know logical problems with a God who's omnibenevolent, omnipresent, and in this you know and omnipotent in a world in this condition doesn't make sense. I'm just you know one selfish atheist you know minor human being, right? But I still give a shit about the people around me. I still you know get sad if I see a homeless guy. I still get mad when I read about kids being deprived of proper education. And I, you know, my heart breaks when I read about, you know, girls all over the world in refugee camps who don't have citizenship cards and don't have access to school or medicine. You know, I get pissed when I hear about female circumcision and male circumcision. Yet God, infinite in power and in love and in presence and in ability to do whatever the fuck he wants, doesn't want to get rid of pain. Either he's an asshole or he's not real. I think, you know, since he's such a petty and jealous God, according to the Bible, and, you know, doesn't like anybody not believing him, I think the presence of myself, the amazing atheist, theoretical bullshit, the amazing experience, the atheist experience, um, you know, Pat Condell, Betty Bowers, Edward Current, Thunderfoot, CDK007, I think all of that is that kind of evidence against at least the God of the Bible, because why doesn't he just come fucking smite us, right? If God, you know, really wanted to save people, you know, why doesn't he convert Richard Dawkins? Why doesn't he convert, you know, why doesn't God just make himself known? I think, I think those problems would have bugged me eventually. I think God's, you know, invisibleness and, you know, his impotence you know, would have eventually led me to the conclusion that I've reached, which is that he's imaginary, he's fictional, he's a story we tell ourselves, but he's not real. If he was, why hasn't he stopped me? Everybody in YouTube land, have a great and godless day. Peace.